I'm really proud to be standing here because I think the Australian Public Service and public administration in general has got a lot to be proud of and we don't get the opportunity as public servants to get up here and talk about some of the achievements uh, we've made. We get lots of commentary uh, from all sectors about the things that go bad and, and the things that we should be doing. So um, I, I'm really proud to be standing here and launching uh, Innovation Month. And I want to talk a, a bit about a, a few things on public sector innovation, why the digital revolution offers us so many opportunities and challenges. Uh, secondly, just talk about what we've agreed as the Secretary's Board and with my colleagues in, in terms of how we do strengthen innovation across the, the Australian Public Service. And then I'll, I'll share my excitement about some of the things uh, that are going on uh, across Innovation Month. And uh, as Jane said, we've got a, a video highlighting some examples of innovation in practice from across the Australian Public Service and indeed something we can be very proud of. Um, on, the, on the first thing, that digital disruption is a phrase used a lot now and just last week at the Crawford School I think we decided not to use digital disruption anymore and talk about digital creativity. Um, and we are absolutely living in a time of significant change and the digital uh, revolution is not the only thing that we're, we're coping with at the moment. Um, but this, the digital revolution is absolutely affecting everything we do. And one of the characteristics of this change is how we're moving away from thinking about discrete products and thinking more about ongoing relationships and platforms. Um, where many products were things that you bought, uh, now they must be uh, just the start of an ongoing connection with the supplier. And just a couple of things, just to, by way of an example, uh, that, that came up too at the Crawford School last week was looking at transport and the role of Uber, for example. Uh, and we're absolutely dealing with uh, uh, country of origin labelling and looking at what technology that might bring further down the track when uh, indeed all of us will know exactly what's in the ingredients we buy and how old they are just by putting our phones over the, over the top of products. So uh, looking at those real live examples of things that we're dealing with now and how the public sector uh, need to keep up with those um, uh, is, is, is live. And so what does, what does that mean in terms of how we think about our role as public servants and the role of public policy and indeed uh, how we regulate and keep up with community expectations? And uh, it suggests we cannot think that we can develop and launch a policy and then move on. I think um, gone are the days when there was a linear process to both policy development and regulation. And I think we've got to try more things and uh, be open to uh, trialling and incubating and e e even with um, uh, legislation and regulation and because it is such an iterative process. And I think um, if we think like that, what does it mean in terms of the oh. practice of policy? Oh. Thank you for yelling out. I'll can you hear that? Okay, sorry. Uh, this clearly raises some uh, big questions for us and how we think and act and when it comes to policy, development, regulation and service delivery. In response, we need to reassess many ele elements of our system. And some examples we will see in the video today show us how the public service is already engaging with this digital shift and why innovation is so important. And, and given that we're all going through downsizing, there's a whole lot of public sector reform that we're dealing with. I don't think we've got any choice other than looking at challenging the way we do business and looking at the opportunities uh, the digital and other platforms may bring to us. Some of the examples we've got uh, to showcase are, are MyTax, a demonstration of digital offering. It's not just a paper form uh, made into an electronic version, but something that takes advantage of the opportunities offered by an interactive online format. And I must say, I haven't done my tax return uh, for a while through that, so I might, I might have to try that as well. Uh, other examples that we're looking at is a single business service that we've been dealing with in industry and science and how we work better as a commonwealth in terms of the interface between business uh, and all of our agencies in a whole of government sense. I think other examples are, are uh, from the animal, Australian animal disease model, provides a better way of modelling the spread of livestock disease and the like. and, and particularly in terms of planning. 
On a larger scale, as artificial intelligence tools are developed uh, and become more affordable, we need to look at how they can be employed across the Australian Public Service. Um, from within our portfolio, IP Australia has recently partnered uh, with IBM to trial Ask Watson, which brings cutting edge cognitive computing technology to analyse a broad range of disparate data and provide computer generated responses with uh, intelligent reasoning. And uh, the Watson trial looks at how this tool can improve agency efficiencies, uh, particularly in IP Australia, aiding uh, with patent examination and the like. So we're looking at how we might uh, roll that out too, uh, more broadly. Other examples you'll see are the Innovation Exchange uh, at DFAT and the Innovation Hub there and uh, something Minister uh, Bishop um, and Peter Varghese are obviously very proud of and I think we can all learn in terms of some of the uh, emphasis on openness, collaboration, uh, agility and engaging with risk that DFAT are, are commencing to do. And of course then there's the DTO and I see David Hazelhurst sitting here and uh, a lot of people will think that that's just another portal and another into the Commonwealth but indeed I'm probably preaching to the converted in this group it is absolutely challenging the way we do business and looking at um, uh, business models right across uh, the public service as well. So uh, engaging in and supporting uh, the digital transformation office reform is, a, is something we all should be uh, looking at and obviously not uh, looking at what we can't do uh, but what we can do in that process. The next steps for the innovation agenda. Uh, there's a lot happening uh, with uh, Innovation Month. Um, and there's, there's a lot to do and no better illustration than what we're seeing in the Department of Industry and Science and companies such as Google, Facebook, Airbnb are having a real impact uh, and incumbent firms cannot rely on their previous dominance to ensure their survival. And to quote John Hagel, in 1937 at the height of the Great Depression and certainly a time of great turmoil, a company on the S&P 500 and had an average lifespan of 75 years uh, and by 2011 that lifespan had dropped to 18 years, a decline in lifespan of almost 75%. And even last month uh, when we were talking to Andrew Stevens and Irving Tan and, and Chris Vane and I think there was a lot, a lot of commentary saying that four out of ten top ranked companies won't survive the next five years. So what does that mean uh, for us uh, in the public sector? They're certainly change, are shaking things up uh, for us and we absolutely do need to find better ways of letting what these disruptive ideas or creative technologies come through and succeed. And I think we, we too in the public sector need to be one step ahead of the curve and truly cut down across silos and, uh, and look at um, trialling new ideas. I think it was in this forum last year where we, where we said one of the biggest barriers to innovation was hierarchy. And I think um, uh, the Secretary's group and particularly Michael Forley want to see uh, new ideas uh, not being uh, put through big bureaucratic processes but absolutely streamlined uh, across the public service. And that was the comment he made uh, just last week when we were considering the innovation agenda. And that does ag absolutely re require uh, leadership, not just through secretaries and SES but, but all of us uh, to help loosen I guess the bureaucracy and the shackles that um, uh, seem to maintain a, a business as usual uh, approach. And if we don't keep up, then we become less relevant too as agencies and a, and a public sector. Uh, innovation is about creating something new, but it all co also can be about adapting and developing someone else's new idea. And I think on the industry and science front, I think um, we're certainly early adopters uh, uh, on lots of technologies that uh, we see uh, across our portfolio. Uh, my colleagues and I on the Secretary's Board have discussed what might be done to further the culture of uh, and environment that supports innovation. And we agreed um, to take two main, uh, to address two areas uh, of action. One was to uh, strengthen the public sector innovation network and what we can do about uh, breaking down the bureaucracy and supporting the supply chain for new ideas coming forward. In terms of strengthening the public sector innovation network, 
the network was started in 2010 as a means of connecting public servants uh, with others interested in how the public service might do things differently. And to help strengthen this network, we've made three commitments um, as secretaries. Each department will clearly identify and support SES level champions and they've already been identified and I can see a few uh, in the room. And I thank you to those champions that are here today. And my own department's champion is at the deputy level and um, whilst it was Martin Hoffman who will be leaving us to go to New South Wales, I will be required to uh, uh, identify another, another champion within my portfolio and I certainly want that to be uh, at a senior level. And I'll be meeting with all the, all the champions straight after Innovation Month to discuss how we can learn from each other in helping to embed innovation, uh, not just within our organisations, but across the APS. Secondly, we're emphasising our support for Innovation Month and value uh, the holding of these sorts of events and want to see Innovation Month as an annual opportunity to take stock and consider whether a new approach might be needed. We can each ask ourselves, what can I do to make a difference? And Jane mentioned some of the work I was doing on recycling. I think I was in APS 6 there where um, uh, you know, it did actually make a difference um, by getting in there and sorting through everybody's rubbish. Um, so you can actually make a difference at all levels. Um, how creative can I be in my approach to work? How can I contribute to coming up with and testing new ideas? And we can each use the month to share our experiences with doing something new, to share the things we have found make a difference and draw inspiration from each other. And I think from the video, it certainly is very inspiring. And thirdly, we're strengthening our support for staff to be involved in, innovation, in the innovation network to meet and share their experiences and insights. And we will look to see how we can use the network to better connect those in the Australian Public Service, particularly outside of Canberra. Many who are on the, on the front line of service delivery and have absolutely rich insights into what's actually happening out there and what works and what doesn't work. And we believe these measures will help connect uh, people with ideas and approaches for how to innovate. And I, I think we should be better at recognising new ideas and those who work to implement, it, implement them. And to address these issues, we've committed to ideas sharing uh, by supporting a trial of a cross-agency platform. Increasingly, we are experiencing convergence of issues and the citizens' view and experience of government is not siloed and nor will the solutions to their needs be. Silos are becoming less important while integration and collaboration are becoming more so. We will learn from the platform trial and from the experiences of agencies uh, such as the DFAT Exchange, Innovation Exchange, that have run their own internal ideas management systems. And I've committed to go back to the Secretary's Board with options for how we can entrench the ability for staff to easily share and collaborate on ideas with those in other agencies. And I think one of the other things that um, uh, secretaries and leaders need to let people make mistakes in a very controlled environment. And, um, I think we need to foster that sort of uh, cultural change within our agencies. And I think it, uh, with this platform, I think it'll be ab absolutely uh, terrific if ideas coming forward and uh, we'll progress those through the leadership group. Um, and of course, I think as, as I mentioned, some of these ideas will be need to be developed, tested and refined and incubated and matured. And I think we need to commit resources to do that and I think um, without telling Jane, I think I committed to uh, uh, committing some of those resources in the Secretary's Board last week so I'll just have to find the usual offsets elsewhere in the department. Um, how can we work across agencies to mature promising but nascent ideas so they can become fleshed out and credible business propositions? We're also identifying and proposing a fast track process uh, for proving novel, untested but promising ideas. And we want to encourage innovation. We need to recognise ideas and the people who have worked on them. And I think we need to look at innovation that's already being implemented in one part of the APS, across the APS. Uh, and I think there is a lot going on and I don't think we've got the opportunity to uh, celebrate, uh, as I mentioned earlier, that often. So we've committed to look at establishing an innovation awards in conjunction with um, IPA. And these awards will uh, separate 
uh, be separate to the existing Australian Wards for Excellence in Public Sector Management. And it's fortunate enough I'm the IPA president for ACT, so getting that partnership was easy. Um, but I think it, it's absolutely uh, important that we promote and uh, six, uh, promote the successes of innovation across the <coughs> Australian public service. Um, these new awards will recognise both individuals and teams um, and I think uh, uh, it'll be a great opportunity, uh, as I mentioned, to celebrate. Just to, just to quickly recap the uh, commitments that Secretary's made, is strengthening um, the network by the Innovation Champions, affirming our support for Innovation Month and other events by encouraging peer support through the network, uh, particularly for those in other cities, and will strengthen the innovation supply chain as well by encouraging and enabling the sharing ideas. And, and one of the things we do need to look at is how do we let public servants uh, make mistakes and trial things and uh, learn from those processes. And meanwhile, in each and every agency uh, will play their part in doing what they can do at the organisational level and, uh, of course, bring those forward into, into forums like this. If you're interested to learn more about what's being done by individual agencies, you might like to come along to the breakfast, again, that IPA is sponsoring and I'm speaking at with um, Lisa Rauter from DFAT, from the Innovation Exchange, and from John Dardo from the ATO to hear real live innovation at work. Innovation Month 2015 and the launch. Um, there's much to be done by each of us and each and every one of us as, as individuals and agencies. And Innovation Month is a great opportunity for us to learn uh, about more about innovation and how we can use it to get results. The theme of this, this month is Dare, Dream, Dare, Do. And this theme sums up a lot about the innovation process. We can dream up new ideas and we can dare to innovate. <coughs> just takes courage and we can act for we truly for we aren't truly innovative until we do act and I think that's where leaders and organizations need to make things happen rather than don't make things happen and this year's program features events that play to these three aspects and the headline events for the month include GovHack which was held on the weekend I think and I think there are about 400 ideas came forward so we must be able to get a few out of those uh, across the service, so um, I thank people for participating uh, in that process as well. We've got the Innovation Summit tomorrow, has some great speakers, including the Chief Scientist, Professor Ian Chubb, and encourage people to get along as Professor Chubb is, uh, I shouldn't say he's winding down his activities, he's, he'll, he's probably winding up to complete uh, by the end of the year, but he's been doing a huge amount um, on innovation and STEM, and certainly promoting <coughs> the science priorities and the like. So. I encourage people get to get along uh, and hear from Ian Chubb. And thank you for the Department of Health for um, sponsoring uh, that event as well. And then, then there's the GovCamp Australia Innovation Dialogues, a series of half-day discussions around the country connecting different sectors. And these events will give us real insight into the issues facing in innovating in each city and contribute to a, a national picture of public sector innovation. And these will culminate in a national discussion on the 31st and will flag the challenges uh, where we need to be daring and the actions that need doing. And I'm happy to take all of that back to the Secretary's Board, um, which will be very interested. And there are many other smaller events, but great events. Um, on the dreaming front, we all know about when the computer says no, but as Jane says, what about when it says yes? Uh, we might what might new developments in uh, artificial intelligence mean for the public service in the future? I'll be able to answer all my problems and <coughs> answers, I'm hoping. Um, on the daring side, the Department of Communications is hosting a panel discussion on seeking uh, the courage to innovate. And on the practical side of doing, we have partnered with the Canberra Innovation Network to run uh, workshops for public servants on using lean startup methods. And if people haven't seen uh, the incubator that Sarah Pearson from the Canberra Innovation Network is promoting. Encourage people to go along and have a look at that too. Uh, there are many more being held. I'll give a special mention for some great events from the Department of Employment and from the Department of Environment. Uh, a calendar listing all of those events has been provided on each chair and I think, that, I think, is this it? Up here, too. I'm not going to go through every line, but um, please, uh, 
please see if you can participate in each of those. I think it, the more we get out and see what's going on, the more we can see how we might apply it to both our organisations and across the public service. So please uh, get involved um, and start the conversation about trying something different and making some small changes and tracking whether they can make an improvement. In conclusion, public sector innovation is not an academic or abstract exercise. What we do does matter. Uh, whether we can do it better matters. And whether we can do it differently to get better outcomes matters. In a world where so much is shifting and where citizen expectations are rapidly evolving and the public service is downsizing and we're going through a huge amount of reform ourselves, we cannot stand still. In a time like this, do we expect things to stay the same? Do we want things to say th stay the same? Uh, knowing that we can do better. And in the old days we used to call it continuous improvement and I think uh, we do need to grab the opportunities. There's no shortage of work to do uh, and I think some people do feel threatened, as Jane obviously does, by innovation uh, and, and doing herself out of a job. But if I can just reassure people, there is a hell of a lot the public service needs to do just to keep up and be in front of the curve. Um, but uh, our jobs certainly uh, will change.